Thank you for your patronage. Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino, an alias which he came up with using a Wu-Tang name generator. He's one of the artists who I directly credit for getting me into hip-hop, and yet despite that characterization, it'd be pretty difficult to argue that Glover is just a rapper. He's also a writer, an actor, a comedian, producer, voice actor, the list goes on. I think Glover has one of the strongest cases for being one of the most versatile and multifaceted artists in all of music and his 2013 album Because the Internet embodies this sentiment. It's a record which takes full advantage of Glover's many talents. The album has its own universe, one which blurs the lines between fiction and reality. There are so many layers to this project, and each layer has its own rabbit holes to explore. Some of these rabbit holes are so extensive that I wouldn't even be surprised if there were still multiple things that have gone undiscovered in regards to this whole project. So I figured this would be the perfect topic for an iceberg-styled video. Because, well, icebergs are pretty big. But much like my MF Doom video, this won't be your traditional iceberg. For one, I won't be using any sort of pre-made image I found online. Instead, I've personally handpicked each of these topics myself. And just like my MF Doom iceberg, I've created an image to go along with this video, and I'll be posting it on Reddit for the rest of the internet. There'll be a link to it in the pinned comment below. I'll also be leaving a pastebin link, featuring most of the things I referenced in this video. Lastly, your research, writing, editing, among other things, this video took me even longer to put together than my last iceberg. So if you appreciate the work and effort I put into my content, please leave a like on this video, and maybe even a comment to supplement the algorithm. And for those of you who would like to go the extra mile, consider posting this video on a relevant subreddit, discord server, or facebook page. And without further ado, let's get into exploring the iceberg that is Childish Gambino's Because the Internet. I figured the actual album itself would be a good place to start. Because the Internet was released on December 10th of 2013 under Glass Note Records, the same label responsible for putting out a majority of Gambino's studio albums. The album has 19 tracks in total, including instrumental tracks, with a total runtime coming in at just under an hour at 57 minutes and 52 seconds. My personal favorite songs off this album include Shadows, The Worst Guys, Sweatpants, Pink Toes, and the short track The Party. The track list is broken up into acts like the kind you'd see in a play, but we'll talk more about that later. The Boy The Boy is a character or an alter ego that Glover uses throughout because the internet's universe. Think about it like one of Doom's alter egos. The Boy is a wealthy, silver-spooned internet dweller who spends most of his days hanging out with his friends in his mansion, browsing world star hip-hop, and trolling on Twitter. There's not really that much to say about The Boy, he's just a character, but we'll learn plenty more about him as we go through this iceberg. An extra bit of trivia though is that Jaden Smith ended up playing the character of the boy in the next Gambino project, Kawhi. Album cover art. An album's cover art is an essential and key component of any record, as it serves as the musical's visual representation. Glover knows this, or at least he used to. I love the cover for Because the Internet. I don't know what it is about it, but there's just something so serene and aesthetically pleasing about the colors. A clever aspect I really like about the cover is how it's actually a GIF. A GIF, or GIF, however you want to pronounce it, is a staple format across the internet, which circles back to the whole internet theme of the album, which we'll see a lot of throughout this entire project. Obviously, the physical versions are still images, so to compensate for that, the CD version features a lenticular image that changes when you move it around while the vinyl version features a blurred image on the cover of the screenplay, while newer releases of the vinyl which don't include the screenplay have it on the trackless cover. Supposedly, the blur is meant to resemble a Rorschach test, or to make it seem like Gambino is jumping out at you. Clapping for the wrong reasons. Clapping for the Wrong Reasons is a short film that's paired with both the album and the screenplay, and it's one of the main three pillars which the BTI universe is built upon. The short film actually takes place prior to the events of the screenplay, and it takes us through a day in the life of the boy or Gambino, or Donald Glover. It's sort of open to interpretation as to who exactly is being represented throughout a lot of this, but I think it's safe to say that, in a way, it's all the same person, since all these characters come from the mind of Donald Glover. I believe he uses these characters to tell stories and to articulate different points, as well as to represent certain aspects of his real life and things he actually went through, but presents it to us through the lens of these characters. A lot of good writers will do this, they'll take from their real life experiences and implement that into their art. For the short film, there's both the internet version as well as the director's cut. With the internet version coming in at less than a minute, the director's cut on the other hand is the full length coming in at over 20 minutes. There are multiple interpretations in regards to the differences between both versions. 
One YouTube comment states that the internet version is intentionally shorter, not because it's a trailer, but because people on the internet tend to have very short attention spans. Other comments point out how the internet version purposely takes certain scenes out of context, to make a point on how the internet has a way of misconstruing things, causing them to seem more sensational and hyperbolic than they really are. What? Gosh, it's not like the internet to go crazy about something small and stupid. For instance, take the two examples that this comment points out. This scene makes it seem like Gambino is drowning someone, when in reality he's just playing around with this girl. Or this scene, with Chance the Rapper yelling. Damn it! It's intentionally cut to make it seem like something bad has happened, when in actuality, he only just lost a game of Connect 4. Speaking of Chance, he's one of the many noteworthy people to appear in this short film. Some other cast members include Flying Lotus, Trinidad James, Danielle Fischel, Ebola Anderson, and a few more. As it says on the first page of the screenplay, Clapping for the Wrong Reasons is available here on YouTube for free consumption. The Screenplay In tandem with the album comes a 73-page screenplay, written by Gambino himself. Aside from the boy, noteworthy figures within the screenplay include Rick Ross and The Fox from What Does The Fox Say, for some reason. The album is actually meant to soundtrack the screenplay, with cues within the passages instructing you on when to play each song. Someone was cool enough to upload a Google Doc version of the screenplay. I'll leave a link to that within the pastebin link. I wouldn't insist on anyone reading it unless you're a diehard fan, and that's because personally, I don't think the screenplay is all that good. It's very nonsensical. As Glover was going through a bit of an existential crisis in the lead up to the project, so it makes sense that the project would represent and feature a lot of these aimless, existential thoughts and feelings. In the big question of just like, all isn't this all a joke? Like, it's just like, it's just kind of funny. So it's like, I guess, yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's a joke that I'm even like here and talking about an album. It did start, I guess, in a way, like as something that wasn't supposed to be anything. Like all, all of the stuff was like wasn't supposed to be. Like, I'm just going to end like you're going to end like my everyone like it's 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 kind of a joke, it's kind of funny. You also have to keep in mind that Glover is a huge proponent for surrealism, which seeks to take advantage of our human tendency to apply meaningful interpretation, even where it's not meant to be. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to pull meaning or derive your own interpretation of the story. In fact, I think it's a mark of good art when the creator is able to confidently leave enough room open for the audience to come away with their own interpretation of the material. My problem is that Gambino leaves everything too open. Like, enough to the point that I would say to not go into this expecting a cohesive narrative like you'd find in a traditional movie or a novel, because you won't really find one. The screenplay and even clapping for the wrong reasons reads more like a random series of events and conscious thoughts without much rhyme or reason. But that's sort of the point. The point being that there is no point. Things sort of just happen. It all circles back to those feelings of existentialism and meaninglessness, which Donald was dealing with in the lead up to this project. That's pretty much what they say in the last scene of the short film. Sometimes you just can't explain why things happen. They just, they just do. The Deep Web Tour In January of 2014, Glover announced a tour with a set of 29 shows spanning from February to May of 2014. Glover cleverly dubbed it the Deep Web Tour. Again, coming back to the internet theme of the album, which I just have to point out. I love how much character the album has, and I really appreciate the extensive amount of effort that Glover clearly put into it. This is what the average set list for a show looked like. Some encores included tracks off his previous projects, like Heartbeat off Camp, SoFly off Cold Sack, or One Up off Royalty, one of my personal favorites off that mixtape. Sets on the Deep Web Tour were intentionally set up to look as if they were taking place in the boys' mansion. We knew we wanted to make a mansion and we knew we wanted it to, to feel like a living room set, so uh, we just started talking about things that are in his living room. With Gambino even going as far as to kick people out of his house when the track The Party comes on. Gambino really just made his shows an interesting and interactive experience for both him and the audience, and I can't think of a better example than this than the Deep Web Tour app. This app was specifically created to accompany the shows throughout the Deep Web Tour. Before the set started and Gambino came out to perform, anonymous audience members could write messages and draw pictures that would be visible on the massive screen on stage. We're running quite a lot of video files and the backdrop especially is a very high resolution. It's nearly 3,000 pixels across by about 1,000 pixels high, so it's higher than a high def. Gambino and his crew would occasionally participate as well. Fans would also participate in polls that would ask different questions with four preset answers. I can't find any actual proof, but I would assume Glover coded the app himself, or at least took part in the app's creation in some sort of significant way. Secret Storyline with End Music Video Four tracks off BTI were given a music video. The Worst Guys, Sweatpants, 
Telegraph Ave, and 3005. Even when watching the videos in order, there doesn't really seem to be any sort of narrative, not even a loose one. And that's probably because the music videos are corresponding to events within the screenplay. But if I haven't made it clear by now, I don't care for the screenplay. And I don't think the screenplay is needed in order to enjoy the album or the music videos. Fans have however come up with a theory linking the four music videos together. When watching the music videos in order of the tracklist, we see what appears to be a sort of alien invasion, which begins with Gambino getting infected in The Worst Guys having the alien revealed in Telegraph Ave, the alien beginning to take over the earth as seen throughout sweatpants, and lastly destroying the earth as seen towards the end of 3005. But I wouldn't bother trying too hard to make sense of any sort of narrative within the four music videos, just because it doesn't really matter. Because Roscoe's a wetsuit. There are many instances of the phrase throughout most aspects of this project, most notably the screenplay, but we also see it in the Worst Guys music video, on a poster, throughout the deep web tour, and even in social media posts. It's a little abstract, but Roscoe's wetsuit is pretty much the symbolic representation of this entire project, and the meaning is that, well, there is no meaning to it. It only has as much meaning as we give it, kinda like life. It's up to us as individuals to create our own meaning in life. And I get it, like I mentioned, Glover was going through an existential crisis in the lead up to this project. And part of going through an existential crisis involves the sudden realization that nothing really matters. Sounds to me like Donald may have stumbled onto existentialism. Fucking internet. No, 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 it's a European philosophy. Personally, I wish the project would have had a greater message to it, not because it has to. It's Gamino's project after all, and he could present whatever he feels like. And I still love Because the Internet, but it just seems like a total waste of Donald's effort for the greater significance to be that there is no significance. By the way, you know, when you're, when you're telling these little stories, here's a good idea. Have a point. The Gold Molar. The Gold Molar is a Twitter handle for the boy, but it's more well known for a really gross scene and clapping for the wrong reasons, where Gambino pulls a gold tooth out of his nose. People have been debating the meaning behind this scene and the Gold Molar itself since the screenplay dropped, but realistically, on theme with everything else, it probably doesn't have any sort of significant meaning. Because as we learned, sometimes you just can't explain why things happen. The Boy's Mother Throughout Gambino's deep web tour performances, the boy's mother, represented by this projected orb and voiced by Gabrielle Union, would make appearances on screen at key points throughout the shows. She would share a dialogue directed at the boy before the performance of certain tracks. She also had a short appearance in the Because the Internet video game trailer. Supposedly, she's also mentioned at the beginning of the BTI screenplay. The boy's father says that she made something special for the boy, but it could just as easily be someone who the boy's father hires to cook. It's also suggested that the boy's mother passed away in a car accident, but we'll come back to that. Secret Track On page 43 of the screenplay, you're directed to play a secret track. Most fans were puzzled by this, till Reddit user peepsy112 managed to find an acapella track within the code of the Childish Gambino website. The user made this discovery by swapping the original line of code with the name Lemon Grab. This is what it looked like initially, and this is what it looked like after the code was switched. This is pretty random. So Peepsy went on to explain that he came to this guest because the section directly above where it says secret track read lemon grab, unacceptable. And that's where the rabbit hole ended. Until 10 months later, where Gambino drops Stone Mountain, Kawaii. User Zealot of Stock on Reddit synced the closing track of Kawaii with the acapella from earlier that year and found that it fit perfectly. Gambino would go on to confirm this in a tweet two days after the release of Stone Mountain. You can find the full version here on YouTube. Dressing as the boy During the Because the Internet era, fans and people who were paying attention in general started noticing Glover wearing the same outfits. Throughout many interviews and photos, you could see him wearing a blue sweater or the iconic brown jacket and hat. He did this as a sort of performance art, which further blurred the lines between Glover, Childish, and the boy. One of the most notorious moments came during an interview on The Breakfast Club. It's not hard to die. I could do it like right now. But like, number two... <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> no, but, it's, but that's real! Like Gambino commented on his use of clothing, saying, We use clothes to make statements about ourselves. That's what they're for. And my clothes right now are me. Airbnb In tandem with Airbnb, Gambino hosted multiple shows and mansions set up to look like the boy's house. Unfortunately, I can't find any photos or even much information about the events, except for this archived Tumblr post, which could be found on foreverchildish.com. The post reads as follows. To whom it may concern, I'm having a small get-together at Manchester's around the US. I'm gonna perform the new album live with my friends in the living room. I can't invite everyone, so leave your name, email, phone, and zip after the jump. The few people I can invite will be notified by phone so we can let you know the address. Thanks. 
see you there. Childish. The Hacks Flash Drive. At specially selected stores, the first 50 people to purchase a copy of Because the Internet were awarded the Hacks Flash Drive, a USB containing four files, the BTI movie poster, a PDF of the screenplay, an MP3 of Gambino's live performance at Life is Beautiful Festival in Las Vegas, and an MP3 of the track What Kind of Love. You can listen to the track on Gambino's official YouTube page, and there's also re-uploads of the Life is Beautiful live performance here on YouTube as well. The Hacks flash drive actually originates from the screenplay, where it was mentioned multiple times. This is one of my favorite details of the whole project, because the flash drive itself is an actual thing within the story of the screenplay, so to have something from the story come to life and be given to fans who purchase the album is a cool touch. And sure, it's just a little gimmick, but to me, it goes to show how much effort and attention to detail was placed on this very intricate project. And the fact that the flash drive was barely promoted and was kept more low-key makes it that much more special. Tumblr IRL presents Childish Gambino. In collaboration with Tumblr IRL, Rough Trade Records, Glassno Records, and Childish Gambino, a live show and exhibition were put on for the most dedicated of fans. A room at Rough Trade Records shop in Brooklyn was set up to resemble the boy's home and was on display for over a month, from November 25th to January 4th. Initially, the live performance would take place in that same room, until for undisclosed reasons it was moved to a loft in Manhattan. To find out the exact location, fans would have to go over to Rough Trade Records and acquire a wristband, which would then allow them entry into the Manhattan loft where Gambino would be performing. Got no patience. This is a reference to a tweet by Will I Am, where he mistakenly uses the wrong type of patience and is corrected by the boy. I don't know if the original tweets are still up or if they were deleted, but these were real tweets. Gamino uses the same homophone on the track 3005, a possible reference to the tweet that the boy replied to book on existentialists. As part of his performance art, Glover incorporated this book on some key existential philosophers of the 19th and 20th centuries. He'd be spotted in public carrying this book around like a prop, but it ended up being more than just a prop. The book was a sort of extension to the character, like the outfits were. And I think this book perfectly adds to the existential sentiment Glover was omitting throughout the Because the Internet era. As of recording this, you could find that very same book on Amazon for $14, or a used copy for just a few bucks. Park Gatherings A month before the official release of Because the Internet, Gambino held listening parties in public parks across North America. Aside from skateboarding and looking for quarters, he was previewing tracks off Because the Internet and answering random questions from Roscoe's wetsuit to his thoughts on Kendrick. You know, I think Kendrick is the best lyricist right now, honestly. So, but I think... He was also taking selfies, freestyling, and overall just hanging out and spending time with his fans. One of the gatherings which took place on November 13th at Pan Pacific Park drew in such a large crowd that it was shut down by the LAPD less than an hour into the session. You can't live your life on a bus. A lot of people may not know this, but because the internet isn't just Childish Gambino's sophomore album, it's also the continuation of his debut album. The line, you can't live your life on a bus, is the first visual in the BTI screenplay, which is a reference to the skit on the closing track of Camp. So in the same way Halloween 2 picks up immediately after the events of the first film, the BTI screenplay picks up immediately where Camp left off, with the same three girls laughing at the boy as they're getting off the bus with the boy departing shortly after them, walking out onto the Methodist Church parking lot where the boy meets his dad. Hackathon In the middle of the Deep Web tour in March of 2014, WordPress hosted the Deep Web Hackathon at South by Southwest. I think Gamino was participating as well, but I can't find much information on the event. And for those of you who don't know, a hackathon is an event where you and your team are given a task to address with a product. Most hackathons include coding, but may also require a business pitch, presentation, or a prototype of your product, among other things. It really depends on the particular event, with some lasting a few hours and others lasting a whole weekend. Over on Twitter, Gambino provided a link leading to his website where fans could sign up to receive updates on the hackathon. After signing up, fans would get this, a confirmation email hoping fans are excited for the hackathon and letting them know that more information was coming soon. But what really caught fans off guard was the PS message claiming that Glover would be returning to the show Community because the internet. As some of you may know, that never happened, and that's because the emails turned out to be fake. And not in the sense that the screenshots were fake or photoshopped, but someone had literally hacked into the hackathon email and sent out that pre-written message to everyone who signed up. Supposedly, the incident was reported and being investigated by the proper authorities. It's also totally possible that it was just Gambino pulling a prank on his fans, as this whole hacking situation would totally fit into the theme of this project. The Temple The Temple is the alias given to the mansion where Gambino recorded because the internet. 
It's also the boy's home in the BTI screenplay, as well as being the setting for clapping for the wrong reasons. In real life, the mansion belongs to basketball player Chris Bosch, who Gamino rented the mansion from. Me and my friends rented a house. It was Chris Bosch's mansion. Mm. I shouted him out before, and uh, and we stayed there, and we all lived there, and then we just ate s'mores and like made songs and stuff like that. Actually, yeah. Now, was Chris Bosch there? Or? He wasn't. I don't think he's ever stayed in that house. So it's just like a crib of his? It's just like a crib of his. Gambino even made a playlist for the temple, which you could still find on his Spotify page till this day. The Deep Web Blog this was a three-part segment detailing Glover's experiences on the Deep Web tour, featuring tons of behind-the-scene content like videos, photos, secret messages, and other miscellaneous information. The blog was originally hosted under the domain name blog.thedeepwebtour.com. The blog has since been taken down, and trying to access that website just gives you an error message. Fortunately, you can still access an archived version of the blog, as well as a genius annotation version. Childish Gambino Website during the Because the Internet era, ChildishGambino.com was a treasure trove of easter eggs to be uncovered, from password protected content to a secret track found within the website's code, among other things. Unfortunately, as of now, most archives of the website have been lost to time, and will likely not be uncovered. If you do have any videos or screenshots of this old incarnation of the website, I'll leave some information at the end of this video as to how you can help preserve it. Infinity Throughout a lot of this project, Gambino seemed to have an interest in the idea of infinity. In the track The Party, Gambino mentions the temple with an infinity pool, which as far as I can tell isn't even in the shape of an infinity symbol, but whatever. 3005 is also a pretty good representation of infinity or forever. It's a date that's so far away that it may as well be forever. In the track, Gambino of course says, till 3005, I got your back, we can do this. If we replace 3005 with infinity or forever, it makes just as much sense. In this tweet, if we replace 3005 with forever, it makes even more sense. Furthermore, if we add up the individual numbers of 3005, we get an 8, itself a vertical infinity symbol. The Hotel Notes On October 14th of 2013, Gambino took to Instagram and posted a series of distressing handwritten notes, detailing a set of his most intimate fears and anxieties. In one of the last notes, Glover mentions how his label wasn't in favor of a December release date, claiming that a December release wouldn't be appropriate because he wasn't a big enough artist, nor was the album a holiday record. Shortly after his Instagram post, fans came through by starting the hashtag Donald for December, which led because the internet to drop in the month of December, something which Gambino strongly wanted. All right, and you were saying that, so the album is coming out December 10th. Yes. And at first the label was not trying to put it out at that time, but somehow nah. you managed to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, the, I gotta thank the fans. The fans made sure that happened. Also, you know, a little bit, uh, Rick Ross coming out at the same time helped. <laughs> like oh, yeah, Rick Ross out album, yeah, his uh, coming out in December. People said don't put out an album out in December. No one does that. I don't want to just breeze through the notes, but I also can't go through line by line in this video. So I recommend you read the notes for yourself. I will say though, I really love the last note, where Glover writes about no matter how badly you mess up, you're always allowed to do better, as well as grow and learn from your mistakes, if you want. Chicken and Futility Chicken and Futility is another short film tied into the BTI universe. The short film features Glover as the boy, Steve G, and Swank, and as the title suggests, they talk about Chick-fil-A and the futile life of a moth. Chicken and Futility emanates that same aimless yet chill vibe that Clapping for the Wrong Reasons has. It's only 3 minutes, yet I found it to be way more entertaining and funny than Clapping for the Wrong Reasons. I definitely recommend it. Hold it horizontal. This phrase refers to a couple of different things. In the track World Star, Gamino says this. My nigga hold it horizontal, man. A lot of people when recording events, especially fights or concerts, will hold their phones vertically, which really annoys people on the internet and you'll commonly see that reflected in the comment section. And this is why Gambino says to hold it horizontal. What I think is most interesting though is that while performing the song, it became a trend for Gambino to hop off the stage and adjust people's phones to be held horizontally. Yo, <laughs> Ask me words. This was a fan Q&A, hosted on Genius.com. Unfortunately, the original link doesn't work anymore, but you could read the annotated version over on Genius.com. There's also an archive version, but I recommend the Genius annotated version instead, just because it has additional information. Fake Campsite When Gambino took to Twitter to announce the Deep Web Tour, he included a link to a fake cam show, hosted by Abela Anderson, the same girl who participated in clapping for the wrong reasons. The tweet has since been deleted, and I can't seem to find any existing archives or screenshots. But here's what he said in the tweet. Once in, fans could send messages in chat, with certain prompts receiving special responses. Here's a list of the few known ones. 
One of the more useful prompts was the word ticket, which would deliver you a link to where you could buy tickets for the deep web tour. Luckily the fake cam site itself has been preserved through an archive version. You can check it out and still interact with the cam show yourself. Album art, fan renditions. During the BTI era, Gambino would encourage fans to remix the album's cover art by using them on his social media. My favorite is this one that makes him look like Schoolboy Q. Catcher in the Rye In 1951, author J.D. Slinger published The Catcher in the Rye, a critically acclaimed coming-of-age novel. Over 50 years later, Donald Glover would read that book in class. Despite not having the most endearing things to say about the book in his New York Magazine profile, it's clear that the boy draws heavy inspiration from Holden Caulfield. The title of Glover's short film, Clapping for the Wrong Reasons, is almost a direct quote from the book, where Caulfield says, people always clap for the wrong things. The Because the Internet video game trailer. This is probably one of the least known pieces of trivia and also one of my favorites. It's a video game trailer for Because the Internet video game. Obviously, it's not a real game and was never intended to be one. But for whatever reason, people were genuinely surprised that a video game was never released. These people would have been blown away by that unreleased Californication video game. As I mentioned earlier, the boy's mother is featured in this trailer. And in case you had any doubts that the boy's mother is voiced by Gabrielle Union, here you go. The trailer also explains what happens to the boy's mother. Supposedly, this video game trailer was made entirely by Gambino himself. For one, the animation itself looks pretty awful, which is fine. Animating is something which takes a good amount of time, effort, and skill, so I wouldn't expect an amateur to bust out with some top tier animation. Additionally, knowing how involved and how much passion Gamino put into this project, I'm more than willing to believe that he went the extra mile and created this little animation just for fun. If you were wondering what this game could have actually looked like, you can check out YouTuber Chadrick, who made a tech demo for what a potential BTI video game could have been. In the description, he actually writes about how he was inspired by Turtle Rock Studio, saying, Since the game never came out, I decided to make it myself. Chadwick imagined the game as one which would revolve around mental health and other effects caused by the internet, which actually would have fit perfectly with the whole theme of the project. He actually created the tech demo to showcase his abilities as a 3D animator, so if you'd like to hire him, his email is in the description of his video. Children and Monsters Children and Monsters is a short, obscure video that was initially found hidden within ChildishGambino.com. The video includes a freestyle from Steve G and Chance the Rapper. We also catch a glimpse of Gambino working on a track that we would later come to know as Unnecessary. There's also a couple random clips spliced in throughout the video that don't seem to hold much significance. You can check the video out for yourself here on YouTube. Charlie Campino Charlie Campino is the name of a SoundCloud page featuring a set of incomplete tracks. They're akin to instrumental tracks as these songs feature little to no lyrical content, but the production itself is still pretty cool and worth a listen if you're a Gambino fan. And now that all the casuals are gone, I'd like to give a special shout out to Victor for gifting me a year of Nitro. I can't put into words how much I appreciate your support. Thank you, Vic. Next up is Bull, who has consistently created art of yours truly. You can hit him up on my Discord. Thank you to Leo, who provided some additional voice lines throughout this video. He has an amazing voice, and you guys can check out his SoundCloud link in the description. And also a huge thanks to those of you who donated your free Prime sub to my Twitch channel. Last, but certainly not least, check out Camden Ostrander on Twitter. Hopefully I didn't butcher your last name. He created a picto chart preserving much of BTI's footprint. I used this picto chart to find many topics to then go out and research on my own for this video. So if you find any substantiated information relating to Because the Internet, please hit him up on Twitter so we can further preserve as much information on this amazing project as possible. And real quick, for any of you guys who would like to support the channel but don't really like Patreon, if you're an Amazon Prime member, then you're in luck. As an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Prime sub every month, which means if you don't use it, you can just gift to me at no additional cost. I'll leave a link to my Twitch and my Patreon in the pinned comment, right above an invite to my Discord server. And if you can't or just simply don't want to do either of those, then that's okay. Just watching this video all the way to the end and leaving a like is hugely appreciated as well. That's all I have, and I'll see you guys again very soon.